Hi, and welcome to this session for the SNF virtual training program. My name is Charlotte Stinnager, and I'm presenting Section D, Resident Mood Interview and Total Severity Score. I'm a registered nurse with experience in acute and post-acute direct care, nursing education, and quality management. Currently, I'm a senior staff associate at Econometrica Incorporated in Bethesda, Maryland. At the conclusion of this training, you should be able to identify the revisions to the resident mood interview PHQ 2 to 9 and describe the changes to the guidance for coding and scoring the resident mood interview and total severity score. Now to note, Section D includes a new data element, D0700 social isolation. As this data element is considered a social determinant of health, Training on this item and guidance can be found in the social determinants of health and new data elements in Section A presentation. It's important to also note that the changes that have been identified in this training have been based on the minimum data set MDS 3.0 Resident Assessment Instrument RAI Manual version 1.18.11. These changes, as seen on this slide in orange font, will be identified throughout this presentation in orange font color. Now, let's talk about the general revisions made to this section. First, existing items are renumbered. You will see now the resident mood interview is numbered D0150, and the total severity score is now identified as D0160. Changes and updates were made to cross-setting data element guidance, promoting alignment with other PAC settings. There is new guidance for D0100, should resident mood interview be conducted. If a resident cannot communicate, then staff mood interview D0500 A through J should be conducted, unless the assessment being completed is a standalone Part A prospective payment system PPS discharge. If that is the case, then skip to D0700, social isolation. Now let's start with the changes to the resident mood interview. For D0150, there have been new item rationale added to the guidance. Let's take a look. For health-related quality of life, it's important to know that coding the presence of clinical signs and symptoms of depressed mood does not automatically mean that the resident has a diagnosis of depression or other mood disorder. Assessors do not make or assign a diagnosis based on these findings. They simply record the presence or absence of specific clinical signs and symptoms of depressed mood. Facility staff should recognize these signs and symptoms and consider them when developing the resident's individualized care plan. Taking a look at the actual item, experienced NIP providers will recognize how the PHQ items are familiar, but the item itself was divided. The PHQ2 is comprised of the first two items, A, little interest or pleasure in doing things, and B, feeling down, depressed, or hopeless. The remaining seven questions make up the PHQ2 to nine. This is now broken up with some logic to determine if you would proceed to ask the remaining seven questions based on the responses to the first two questions. That new logic, as written on the screenshot of the item, reads, If both D0150A1 and D0150B1 are coded 9, or both D0150A2 and D0150B2 are coded a 0 or a 1 in the PHQ interview, Otherwise, continue. We will delve a little bit more into understanding that logic a little later in the presentation. Now, looking at the steps for assessment for the resident mood interview, you will see that steps one through four and six through eight have either not been changed or have been updated to reflect the revised item name. But step five was revised to clarify how to approach the assessment for residents who may have a hearing impairment it now states, residents with a hearing impairment should be interviewed using their, no, their usual communication devices and techniques as applicable during the interview. For step four assessment nine, there was some additional instruction added to reflect how the interview is broken up. Ask the first two questions. D0150A and D0150B of the resident mood interview, PHQ 2 to 9. 
Additional instructions for this step were, was added to clarify the two columns for symptom presence, column one, and symptom frequency, column two. Finally, step nine also has been revised to include information regarding the use of code nine and what is considered a nonsensical response. It reads, enter code nine in column one and leave column two blank if the resident was unable to complete the assessment or chose not to complete the assessment or responded nonsensically. A nonsensical response is a response that is unrelated, incomprehensible, or incoherent, or if the resident's response is not informative with respect to the item being related. For example, when asked the question about poor appetite or overeating, the resident answers, I always went at poker. This would be considered a nonsensical response. A new step for assessment was added, step 10. Let's review this together. Step 10 states, determine whether to ask the remaining seven questions, D050C through D150I of the resident mood interview, PHQ 2 to 9, whether or not further evaluation of a resident's mood is needed depends on the resident's responses to the first two questions, D050A and D050B of the resident mood interview. If both D050A1 and D050B1 are coded 9, or both D050A2 and D050B2 are coded as a zero or a one in the PHQ interview, otherwise continue. The guidance then clarifies what to do when both D050A1 and D050B1 are coded as a nine. If both D050A1 and D050B1 are coded as a nine, leave D050A2 and D050B2 blank, then in the PHQ2 and leave D0160 total severity score blank. The guidance also identifies what to do if both D0150A2 and D0150B2 are coded with a zero or a one. If both D0150A2 and D0150B2 are coded as a zero or a one, then in the PHQ2 and enter the total score from D050A2 and D050B2 in D0160 total severity score. Step 10 concludes with instruction on what to do for other coding scenarios. For all other coding scenarios, proceed to ask the remaining seven questions, D0150C through D0150I of the PHQ9 and complete D0160 total severity score. Now, I know this was a lot of new instruction, so we will break down each component of this using scenarios in the following slides. Now, think about a scenario where a resident provided a nonsensical response to the first two questions. So, in that case, the symptom presence for the first two items is coded with a nine, and symptom frequency, column two, is left blank. So, if both D0150A1 and D0150B1 are coded 9, leave D0150A2 and D0150B2 blank and end the PHQ2. Leave D0160 total severity score blank as well. Now let's think about a scenario where both symptom frequencies for the first two items are coded as a 0 or a 1. So, if both D0150A2 and D0150B2 are coded with a 0 or a 1, there is no need to continue the PHQ-9. In the PHQ-2 resident mood interview, enter the total score from D0150A2 and D0150B2 in D0160 total severity score. And note, this score could be between 0 and 2. There are a few other scenarios for when you would complete the remaining seven questions in code D0160. So, if D0150A2 and D0150B2 is a 2 or a 3, or if either are scored as a 2 or a 3 and the other is scored with a 0 or a 1, then you would ask the remaining seven questions and complete D0160 total severity score. As mentioned, the continuation of the resident mood interview to code the remaining seven questions is based on the answers provided for the first two. 
As this is new instruction for SNP providers, let's review that logic. If both D050A1 and D050B1, now this is column one coding, are coded as a nine, or both D050A2 and D050B2, and that is column two coding, are coded as a zero or a one, you will end the PHQ interview, meaning do not continue to ask the remaining seven questions. Otherwise, continue the interview. For most of you, this may be a review, but let's understand the coding symptom presence as highlighted on this screenshot. Symptom presence is coded as a zero, no, one, yes, or nine, no response. Let's delve a little more into that, reviewing the specific coding instructions. The coding instructions state that the resident should indicate if the symptoms are not present or present. However, if a resident was unable or chose not to complete the assessment or responded nonsensically, you would code this as a nine for symptom presence. Now, the coding of symptom presence can inform the coding of symptom frequency as indicated on this graphic. Let's look at this more closely. Here in the teal colored boxes, you can see that if column one symptom presence is coded with a zero, no, then you would also code symptom code column two symptom frequency as a zero as well. Now note in the red colored boxes, it indicates if column one is coded with a one, then you would enter a zero, one, two, or three in column two symptom frequency. We will discuss this more on the next couple of slides. However, as you can see here in the gray boxes, if you code column one symptom presence with a nine, then you would leave column two symptom frequency blank. One more thing to note, and this is new guidance, enter a dash in column one if the symptom presence was not assessed and leave column two symptom frequency blank. Now, as mentioned, column two symptom frequency is coded with a zero, one, two, or three if symptom presence is coded with a one. Let's look at how we would determine symptom frequency coding based on this scenario. One thing to note when considering symptom presence and frequency of each of the items listed, be sure to record the resident's responses as they are stated, regardless of whether the resident or the assessor attributes the symptom to something other than mood. Further evaluation of the clinical relevance of the reported symptoms should be explored by the responsible clinician. Now, that being said, let's consider the coding for column two, symptom frequency. The coding instructions state, if the resident indicates that during the past two weeks they've been bothered by the symptom never or only on one day, then code zero, never or one day. For two to six days, then code one, two to six days, several days. For seven to 11 days, then code two, seven to 11 days, half or more of the days. And finally, for 12 to 14 days, then code three, 12 to 14 days, nearly every day. Now, some new coding tips were also added to the guidance. Let's review. It's important to attempt to conduct the interview with all residents. And for coding, if column one equals a zero, enter zero in column two. And if column one equals a nine or a dash, leave column two blank. As you can see on these screenshots, we reflect the coding for those three examples of zero, nine, or a dash. Now let's look at the revisions made to the guidance for D0160 total severity score. First, the item rationale for total severity score was revised for health related quality of life to explain what the total severity score is. It now reads, Total severity score, a summary of the frequency scores on the PHQ 2 to 9 that indicate the extent of potential depression symptoms. There is also new guidance added to the planning for care item rationale. Let's take a look at that closely. First, responses to the PHQ 2 to 9 can indicate potential possible depression if the full PHQ 2 to 9 is completed, meaning the interview is not stopped after D0150B due to the resident's responses. Rational continues explaining how the response can be interpreted. Major depressive syndrome is suggested if 
Of the nine items, five or more of, of the items are identified at a frequency of half or more of the days, seven to 11 days during the assessment period. Minor depressive syndrome is suggested if, of the nine items, the following are identified at a frequency of half or more of the days, seven to 11 days during the assessment period. Those items include D0150B, feeling down, depressed, or hopeless, D0150C, trouble falling or staying asleep or sleeping too much, or D0150D, feeling tired or having little energy. The planning for care rationale also included new guidance on how the score can be interpreted and be used to track changes over time. It now reads, the PHQ-2-9 total severity score can be used to track changes over time. The severity score can be interpreted as follows, one to four minimal depression, five to nine mild depression, 10 to 14 moderate depression, 15 to 19 moderately severe depression, and 20 to 27 severe depression. The coding instructions for the total severity score, reflective of the guidance offered for D0150 resident mood interview, has been revised. Let's start by trying to better understand how the coding of the symptom presence with code 9 would impact the coding of the total severity score. Hopefully, this illustration will help in understanding this concept. If only the PHQ-2 is completed because both D0150A1 and D0150B1 are coded 9, leave D0150A2 and D0150B2 blank. Then in the PHQ-2, don't complete the remaining seven items and leave D0160 total severity score blank as well. Hopefully, this illustration will help in understanding this concept of when only the first two items are scored with a 1 or a 0 for symptom frequency. If only the PHQ-2 is completed because both D0150A2 and D0150B2 are scored as a 0 or a 1, add the numeric scores from these two frequency items and enter the value in D0160. Again, in this case, you would not complete the remaining seven items. You would simply add the numeric scores from the two symptom frequencies for the first two items and enter that value in D0160. As in this example, D0160 would be scored as a one. With the goal of reinforcing these concepts, this illustration depicts a scenario where all symptom frequencies for the nine items were scored. If the PHQ-9 was completed, and that is D0150C through I were not blank due to the responses in D0150A and B, and if the resident, resident answered the frequency responses, but responses of at least seven of the nine items on the PHQ-9, add the numeric scores from D0150A2 through D0150I2 following the instructions in Appendix E and enter that score in D0160. So in this case, you would add the, those numeric scores from D0150A2 through D0150I2 following the instructions in Appendix E. And in this case, that score was 16. Here is an illustration of another scenario, one in which the symptom frequency was blank for three of the items. Remember the guidance states. If the symptom frequency in items D0150A2 through D0150I2 are blank for three or more items, the interview is deemed not complete. The total severity score should be coded as 99 and the staff assessment of mood should be conducted. Unless the assessment being completed is a standalone Part A PPS discharge, if that is the case, then skip to D0700 social isolation. Therefore, in this example shown here, the interview is deemed not complete, and you would enter a 99 as the total severity score. As SNF providers may know, Appendix E in the SNF MDS RAI version 3.0 guidance manual provides additional scoring rules for D0160. These rules consider the number of missing items in column two which is the number of items in column two that are blanked or skipped. 
An item in column two could be blank if the corresponding item in column one was equal to nine, no response, or a dash, symptom not assessed. These rules apply if D0150C through D0150I were asked and described the following. How to compute the total severity score with consideration for the number of missed items in column two symptom frequency and examples of scoring the total severity score based on the number of missing values in column two symptom frequency. In summary, the SNF MDS guidance manual did provide some revisions and new guidance for the coding of both D0150 and D0160. Remember, D0150 Resident Mood Interview PHQ 2 to 9 is a standardized interview for depression and mood disorders. Following the steps for assessment and coding for the PHQ 2 to 9 is essential for accurate detection of possible depression. By tallying the PHQ 2 to 9 symptom frequency scores, a total severity score can be calculated. D0160 total severity score can indicate the extent of potential depressive symptoms. I hope you found this presentation helpful. If you have questions about this presentation, please submit them to PAC training at econometricainc.com by June 2nd, 2023. Select questions will be answered in Q&A sessions offered during the June 2023 virtual live event. Thank you for reviewing and enjoy your day.